Marcos, uh, third talk is uh, going to be held now. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you, Mustafa. So hello, everyone. So this is the third and, and last uh, lecture about this uh, mini course on locally conformed Keller um, structure only groups. So since we have a uh, free yesterday, so let me do some very brief uh, review about what we had uh, seen last time. So, so we define and discuss about the, about the definition of uh, locally conformally Keller structure on the algebras. So G, remember, is the algebra. So it means that uh, we have an inner product and a complex structure on our <clears throat> Lie algebra. And with this, we can define uh, second um, the fundamental form associated with this uh, Hermitian structure. So remember, this is just the inner product and the complex structure. And um, the LCK condition means that, uh, well, omega is not close, so it's not killer, but it's a multiple of, of itself, where theta is a one form and it's close. So theta is in G star and it's close. So that's the condition of the locally conform any killer. So what else? So, so we saw with details the relation between this structure on at the Lie algebra level and the correspondence with left invariant left sorry left invariant um, locally conformally Keller structure on the simply connected uh, connected Lie group associated with with our Lie algebra. And uh, at the end, we also, uh, at the end of the second lecture, we also discuss about the, the lattices, lattices um, in a given Lie group. So lattices gamma in a given Lie group. For example, if G is uh, solvable, so we call this, Manifold. And somehow we, we also um, the detail of how to induce from a left invariant structure on your group, how to induce the structure, so the LCK structure. CK structure caution on your compact manifold. Right. Okay. Um, good. Perfect. Uh, what else? So, what's the plan for today? So, the plan for today is just focus more on on this last part. So, we will discuss about a locally conformally Keller structure um, on some manifolds. On some manifolds. The idea is um, uh, talk about uh, non result properties, maybe some examples, and at the very end, some open problems in this topic. That's the, the plan for today. So let me start uh, recalling that uh, what's happening. So the first part of this talk will be about uh, what's happening in dimension four. So four dimensional, four dimensional LCK sol manifolds. That will be the first part. So we have already started with this. So if you remember, uh, so recall, Last uh, last lecture, so we give an example of uh, the algebra. 
So the Lie algebra was just an extension of, of the Heisenberg. So the Lie bracket are just a y equal to z. And uh, we describe uh, the Lie group, simply connected Lie group associated with G, also lattices uh, in that Lie group to define a uh, nil manifold. So nil manifold. Nil manifold. Associated with this uh, Lie algebra, we saw that it's a mid and LCK structure. Actually, it was Weissman because the Lie form was parallel. So we already have a structure of uh, a Weissman example. So the algebra with the Weissman structure. And if you remember, so the name of this uh, Lie manifold was primary Kodaira surface. Okay, That's, that was our main example we saw last time. So now let me <clears throat> give you another one just to get the flavor of what is happening in dimension four. So let's uh, take G for dimensional Lie algebra with the basis A, X, Y, Z. So here the D bracket are a little bit different. So A is acting on X and, and Y by, sorry, X and Z by diagonal and then x z is just minus y. So that's the that's on the Lie bracket in our Lie algebra. So we need to define again the metric. Well, but the metric is uh, such that the basis the basis is uh, orthonormal. And what else? And the comp structure. So the comp structure J is uh, the same that we have in the previous example. So A is going to Z and X is going to Y. So with this in mind, we can uh, we can describe how the fundamental form is. So let me first take uh, a basis of one form, alpha, small x, y, and Z. So this uh, basis of one form, dual to the other one. So with this uh, ingredient, we can compute the fundamental form and this is just uh, alpha z plus x h y. We will see that this is an induced LCK structure. So to compute the, the derivative, just we need to take d alpha dx dy. So remember, in general, for one form, one form eta, how we compute uh, derivative is just because everything is left invariant here. So this is just minus eta in the d bracket of well, it's not x. So in general, u d. So for any u d in your real, right? So that's the the formula for the derivative. So it's easy to see in this case that uh, the alpha, because it's not in the commutator, uh, is zero. And then the x has something because it's, uh, it's minus alpha x. The y is uh, plus x, which said, and he said it's just alpha wage set. So that's the description of the differential of the one form from the basis. So now we can compute the omega. So the alpha is zero and the set is, is alpha wage set. So the alpha which is zero and then you have uh, alpha d set, but this is a multiple of alpha, right? So this is again zero. So the only thing 
we have but let me just write down the non-zero part of e omega which is uh, just minus alpha minus alpha h x y so that's the only thing so it's come from um, dx dx so this is dx and y but it's the same if we do the wage against everything right because the first term vanish but this is exactly minus alpha wage so this tell us that this is the candidate for the leaf form and actually it's right because it's close so the leaf form is minus alpha in this case okay great so we have an lck structure so omega theta is an lck structure or all the Sometimes we call omega theta the LCK structure, sometimes the inner product and the complex structure. So it's the same. It's an LCK structure. And the previous example, the primary collider was a Weissman structure. So here we will see that this structure is not Weissman. So to do that, so we know that we will compute how is, uh, so we need to check that it's not parallel the leaf form. So let's compute nabla x theta and see what, what happened if we evaluate it in x. So this is minus theta in nabla x x. And we need to compute what is this, right? So let's take any element in our the algebra w and use the Kosul formula. So Kosul and also formula formula for this. So this is a cyclic thing. So this is x uh, x w, which is zero. So minus second one, first and first, and then last one, second, first and second. Right? Okay, perfect. If you see these two guys are exactly the same, if you write this as minus x minus, sorry, w x. So there are two times this, but one over two. So this is just, um, what's the right one? This this one, x again, x. Great. So now uh, um, uh, W was any element is in our Lie algebra. What's happening is if W is equal to A. So in this case, in this case, we have that omega uh, nabla x x, the component of this uh, guy in the direction of A is just A x x. And if you see how our Lie bracket are, so A X is just X, but this element uh, is unitary, so this is one. And you can you can compute what's happening if W is any other element which is orthogonal to A. So combination of X Y and and Z, you can see that here this is zero. So this tells us that nabla x x has only something in the direction of, of a, and the scalar is one. So we compute nabla x x. So we can come back here, and we have that this is minus theta evaluated in a. But what was theta? Theta was just minus alpha. So this is alpha x. And this is the, the basis dual of the, of the basis of vector. So this is just one. So in particular, it's different from zero. So that's the conclusion. So 
nabla uh, theta is different from zero. So this is an, an example. This is an example. So let me write down here. This is an example of an LCK structure. G, which is not Weissman. So there are examples. Okay, so we have two examples, one Weissman, one LCK, no Weissman. And uh, well, what more properties about this example? Uh, well, uh, you can check that this G is solvable and uh, non impotent. So to see this, I mean, you can do it as an exercise, but it's just very easy to compute the commutator and do the bracket again, everything, and again, the commutator just one time, and you will get zero in one case, which means that it's solvable. But the other, uh, the lower central series uh, stabilizes, so it's never nilpotent. Uh, what's other property? So this, uh, the associated simply connected Lie group, simply connected Lie group with Lie algebra G and mid lattices. Mid uh, lattices. So here again, in this example, we have a compact caution of G mod gamma, and any of this uh, caution compact manifold, uh, uh, when if this is uh, in our surface, surface of type is plus. So one example is solvable and the compact manifold is in our surfaces of type S plus and the previous one was just a nil, a nil manifold and it's a pre primary codira surface. So that's the two examples we have so far. But let's uh, say something about in general what we have dimension four. So in dimension four, we have uh, following compact complex uh, surface, which are uh, isomorphic, diffeomorphic, diffeomorphic. Right. It was so manifold. So manifold. So the list of, of sol manifold, which are compact complex surfaces in dimension four, is clear, and there are six possibilities. So the first one is um, just uh, the complex torus. So no Lie bracket. Identically zero. Second one is our first example, primary Kodaira. So here, remember, is extension of Heisenberg. So only one bracket. Third is secondary Kodaira surface. So here is um, semi direct product of the Heisenberg. So there is a guy acting. So let me call it this guy is A. So there is an action here, a joint of A. And how to describe the bracket? Well, I, I will do everything. So A, A in X is Y and A, Y is minus X. And there is a Heisenberg guy. This means that the joint of a acts in x, y, and z just by 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and 0 here. Secondary collider. Number four is uh, in our surface. 
type S plus, S zero, sorry. And the Lie algebra can be described as R acting on R3. Sorry, this is the Lie algebra, right? In R3, and the action in this case of the guy acting from, from the left is just by a complex block. In that case, I think it's not this. So since they are um, sole manifold, so remember, so the Lie group admit lattices, so the, the Lie algebra has to be unimodular, which means that the trace of this adjoint operator has to be zero. So here it's zero, so here is minus one over two, minus one over two plus one is zero again. So he B is any real number. And uh, this case, this case, so when you have one guy acting in an abelian ideal, this is called almost, almost abelian. I will explain about this case with more details later. Number five is in a way of type S plus. This is R acting in R3 again, in H3, sorry. So we have A, X, I several guy. And then there is uh, A acting by a diagonal. So that's the example we have ready. Up, so here the action is by a diagonal. So one minus one, zero. Again, the trace is zero. And the last sample is hyperelliptic. Hyperelliptic. Place. So here it's again almost a billion. And the action, I will just say what the action is, is zero, one, minus one, zero. That's all possibly the all possibilities we have in dimension four for a complex uh, compact surfaces, which is trifeomorphic to a sole manifold. Just to get an idea how this locally conformally killer. Uh, structure means in dimension four. So remark all of them, all the examples we have, and meet LCK structure, except for one and six. So the complex torus and the hyperelliptic surface doesn't admit. They don't admit, sorry. And moreover, number two and three. So they are primary or secondary codaira. They are more than NCK. They are Weissman. So LCK plus parallelly formed. So that's the picture in, in dimension four. So these uh, guys are LCK, and two and three are Weissman. OK, great. So what we want to do now, we want to try to, to generalize what's happened in dimension four to any, any dimension. So the second part of the talk will be about special cases, special cases of um, LCK so many. So if you see, there are mainly two type of the algebras. So we have um, almost a billion, so just, extension of an abelian one. And the other case is, it's called almost nilpotent. So you have Heisenberg and then one extra guy acting from outside. So we will consider those two cases in general. So the first part of this um, special cases is about, sorry, it's about 
almost a billion um, the groups with LCK structures. The idea is generalize what's happening in dimension four. So the definition to so G, Ali algebra, G is called almost a billion, almost a billion if uh, it has and uh, a billion ideal of co-dimension one. So that's uh, the definition. So which means that if G is your Lie algebra, so this is just R acting on R, let's say to N. Uh, it's not necessary even or odd, it's just RD. This means that the Lie algebra itself, I mean the Lie bracket, are completely determined by this uh, this matrix uh, M. And the same happened with the with the group. If G is the group with Lie algebra G, so the group is again R acting on R D with some B with this guy is just exponential of Tm. So that's the the definition of an almost import, almost a billion group. Okay, so let's study uh, locally conformally Keller structure on this uh, family of the algebras. So recall that we have two things to do in general. That was, uh, so we have two problems, let's say problems. So first one, was okay, study the structure itself, so LCK structure on the Lie algebra. And the second one was about the existences of lattices, lattices in the associated Lie group. Right? So let me explain something about the second problem so you will realize how, why this almost a billion are a good candidate to, to work with. So there is, so in general, let me recall that in general, uh, the existences of lattices for a solvable Lie group, I mean, there is no criterion to determine these uh, existences. There is only some result about an impotent Lie groups, but in general for solvable, there's nothing. So, but with this particular family, we have this uh, result, position. So this was um, made by Bock. Christopher Bock in 2016. So this is a criterion for the existences of lattices in this family of almost nilpotent Lie group. So if G is an almost nilpotent, um, yes, almost nilpotent, almost abelian, sorry. I will talk about almost nilpotent later. Almost abelian, then G and mid lattices, lattices, if and only if. So there is a, an equivalent condition, exists a real guy different from zero, such that this phi of T zero is, so this matrix, so phi is the guy acting, uh, is conjugate, is conjugated to an integer integer matrix. That's the condition. So there, at least there is something we can check uh, to see if uh, our Lie group admit or not lattices. Moreover, so the lattice, if it exists, the lattice has a very particular form. So it's just this multiple of uh, Z acting on P minus one 
So what P is, so P is just the matrix you use to conjugate uh, this guy. So this is uh, integer. You take that matrix P and somehow conjugate your, your standard lattice uh, to this gamma. And this is the lattice for your group G. So for almost abelian Lie groups, there is a good uh, result about the existences of lattices. So now uh, we will focus on the on the first problem. So the existences of LCK structure. So with uh, Adrian Andrada. So we study this. Uh, LCK structure on this family of, of algebra, and we get this uh, characterization. So if G is almost abelian, let's fix the permission structure. So this is structure. Um, so let me do two cases. So in dimension four, We already have the list of uh, what's happened in dimension four, but just to see that with this result, we'll recover what's happened in dimension four. So dimension four, the possibilities for the action. So the only thing we need to describe is uh, what M is. So let me just write down correctly the statement. So G almost a billion Lie group. The algebra, sorry. So this structure is uh, LCK. That's the the right definition. If M is one of the following, so in dimension four, M has four possibilities. So that's the first one. Then you have a diagonal action. Another one. And one with complex. So that's the possibility for Lie algebra, almost civilian type, admitting an LCK structure. So if we require existences of lattices, so with lattices, there are only only two cases here. So this one, maybe you already noticed that this is just R times H3. So there is only one guy acting from the left in the first uh, guy and give you the, the second element in your basis. So that's the first option. And the last one is just, the second one is just the last one. So there exist lattices only for some of choices of uh, mu and lambda. So in particular, remember that uh, the Lie algebra has to be unimodular. So the only possibility is just that two lambda is minus mu. And for some of them, there are lattices. So this is the primary codira. And this one is, so that was number two in our list. And this is number four of type uh, S0. And if you see the list, we have uh, the beginning. They were the only two possibilities with LCK. So the red one here. That's for the choices of this uh, B. And the other possibility was number six, but there was not LCK structure in number six. And our first uh, the algebra in the in the theory is just this one. So it doesn't look like uh, almost a billion, but it does because there is only one guy acting. So you take X acting on Y 
and give you a set. So you can really see this as uh, almost a billion in a very easy way. Okay, so that's the only two possibilities. Dimension four, and what's happened then in dimension of G greater or equal than six. So in this case, we get a description of, of, of M. So if the structure is LCK, then M has to be of this very particular form. So there is some real number there, zero, zero. And then this small matrix, it has multiple of the identity plus something else and new lambda real elements and B in UN. So here, the dimension of this is 2N, so this is one. So this part, so let me, so this part is just 2N plus one. So total dimension of your Lie algebra is 2N plus two. So B is uh, UN, so skew symmetric. Skew symmetric matrix. Okay, that's the characterization of algebras, almost a billion, and it is this LCK structure. And then we, we study the existence of lattices. Sorry, lattices. But in this case, if the dimension is uh, greater than four, there are no. So there are not examples. There are not examples of compact, compact examples. Of, um, yeah, of uh, almost a billion. A billion with. LCK structure. That's the situation for, for almost a billion. Okay. So we already have two and four from our original list. So two and four and then, and the other uh, two guys on three and five are extension of nilpotent Lie algebra. So you see Heisenberg, semi-direct product, and here again, Heisenberg, semi-direct product. So we study this, uh, we talk about this in, in general. So the second part of this is about almost nilpotent the algebras with LCK structures. Right, okay, so very quickly the definition. So G is almost nilpotent if it admit a nilpotent ideal of co-dimension. It means that G is R acting on some N, so N is voted. And we really want N known, well, sorry, N um, known a billion. Otherwise, we are in the previous case, right? Would be almost a billion the algebra. So that's the definition of almost uh, nilpotent. So as expected, the same happened from for Lie groups and about the existences of uh, of lattices for almost nilpotent Lie groups. So in in the same uh, series of work of of Christian 
the full bug. So he also mentioned uh, some results about the existences of lattices for this for this family. It's not as easy as we have in the previous case. So the other condition was really um, easy to, well, it's not easy to check, but at least it's very concrete. So here it's more involved and you have, you need to combine, um, yeah, basis with the rational constant structure plus some conjugation to integral matrices. So it's more involved the result, but there is also something here for this family. And okay, so that was about the existence of, of lattices. So again, so in, in dimension four, we have two uh, two cases of this, almost impotent. Was number three in our list, secondary Kodaira. So this guy, when the action of the element from the left is just this one, and the other was number five, type S plus. And here the action is diagonal. Okay. Um, who studied this uh, family in general was Sawai in a very recent uh, paper from last year. So he studied this uh, family of almost nilpotent. Uh, the algebra of this very particular type. So if G is just, is not any almost nilpotent, but just uh, a family which include the, the examples in dimension four. So Heisenberg of any dimension, two and plus uh, one, times a billion part to M. So this is our nilpotent part. So this is almost nilpotent, R acting on N. And he proved that uh, this G admit, admit LCK Let me call the structure just this way. So the inner product and the complex structure. And there are two uh, possibilities. If, in addition, the structure is um, Weissmann, so the Lie algebra is with M equal to zero or one. So it means that there are two possibilities. G is either R acting on two M equal to zero, which means just an extension of the Heisenberg. And the other possibility, so let me call it this way, so M zero or M equal to one. And in this case, we have R acting on Isomer times R2. That's uh, the only two possibilities for Weissmann structures. And if it is just LCK and not Weissmann, so that's even more restrictive and M has to be zero and N has to be one. So this is just R acting on H3, so dimension four. So LCK structure on this uh, family of almost nilpotent Lie algebras, which are LCK and not Weissmann, only happen in dimension four, which is this case. And this, if if you if we check with the list, this is just the you know. Uh, S plus. 
in our previous list. And um, the other case, which is number three, so the secondary codaira is here. So secondary codaira is here when n is equal to one. That's the situation in dimension four. Okay, but, but the question in general, in general, so what's happened for um, G of almost nilpotent with any nilpotent N, any nilpotent the algebra, it's up. So the only uh, understood case is just this extension of Heisenberg uh, by an abelian factor and then just semi-direct product. So which means that the nilpotent guy N has commutator of dimension one. That's the only case uh, that is considered so far. In general, it's widely open. Okay, so that was about uh, the special cases. So we talk about almost abelian and almost nilpotent. So now in the last part of, of the talk, I want to uh, give more detail about this particular family of LCK, so Weissman structures. Remember LCK plus parallelly four. Okay. So what's the idea here is just to to use this extra condition in order to describe better the the family of uh, Lie algebra with this property, bit by So let me start to mention some facts in this, uh, for these Lie algebras with the Weissman structure. So let, let's start in general with uh, LCK condition. So assume uh, LCK condition in our Lie algebra. And of course, we, we don't want uh, Keller, right? So which means that we have our LCK condition and the leaf form is not zero, otherwise will be Keller. But this implies that the kernel of this one form uh, has co-dimension has co-dimension one. So the first um, the composition of the Lie algebra. So we can take so take uh, take an element A. We have, sorry, I didn't mention. So always we have our structure, so complex and inner product. So we can take A, uh, an element in the orthogonal of, of the kernel of the one form. So orthogonal uh, with respect with the metric we have, so the inner product. So in this case, we can also choose this A such that this is one. So the first decomposition of the Lie algebra it's just by this orthogonal curve of uh, the one form. And if we uh, pay attention, so the commutator ideal has to be inside of the kernel of this guy, right? Which is in according G. So why this happened? So this is because um, theta is closed. So the, the one form, the three form is closed. So take any element in your commutator and then apply to, to this guy. And this is minus d theta. Sorry, this is minus d theta, yes, in uh, x, y, but this uh, two form is zero. Theta is closed. So any element in the commutator has to be in the kernel of, the, of this one form. 
So that's the first property we have. And uh, what else? Um, so let's take uh, any element in our Lie algebra. So according to this, uh, the composition is some part in the direction of A plus something else with this guy in the kernel of theta. And we have that theta in this x is just n. So since y is in the kernel and a in theta is one, so this is just t. But uh, on the other hand, if we compute x against a, so this is just t, right? a a plus y a, but y is in the kernel of theta and a is in the orthogonal complement of this. So this guy is zero. So this is just t a square, right? So conclusion, so theta in x is just the product of against a by a square. Okay, nice. So using this, so this is in general for locally conformally Keller structure, not uh, Weissman. But now using this, we will uh, characterize. So let's uh, characterization of Weissman uh, structure. So J with the inner product, which is locally conformally Keller structure on G is actually Weissman. So instead of compute the nabla of theta and check if it is zero or not to see if it is parallel. So there is a much easier condition. And uh, with uh, Adrian Andrada, we, we have this small result about this uh, equivalent. So this is this LCK structure is Weissman if and only if the adjoint of this special element A, we mentioned before, is skew symmetric. So just from the from the Lie bracket of your Lie algebra, if you know uh, what is this A, uh, you can really determine if it is biasing or not. So in particular, it means that, uh, so A, uh, the adjoint of A being skew symmetric means that A is a killing, it's a killing vector. So I, I don't want to talk about this killing vector, but just to mention that this Weissman structure admit one of these uh, particular vectors on G, right? Killing vector on G, left invariant killing vector on G. Okay, so let me give you an idea of the of the, of the proof of this is very easy. So remember, given an NCK structure, if you want to check that uh, if Weissman or not, we need to see if theta is parallel. So for any x and y, we have to compute this, any element in your Lie algebra. And this is just minus theta in the in nabla x, y. But now we have the description of, of this uh, theta acting in some vector, and this is just minus one over. So now again, we can uh, use a uh, formula for the levitch beta connection and compute exactly what this uh, nabla x, y is so minus. There is a two coming from the Kosui formula. And then we have this cyclic and sum against A minus XY plus AXY. Right? Okay. What do we need to see here? So 
take a look at the first uh, term. So this guy is in the uh, commutator idea, right? Which is inside of the kernel, which is inside of the kernel of the one form. And A is in the orthogonal of, of the kernel. So this first part disappear is zero. So the only thing you have is just the other two terms. Minus, let me put it in another way. So plus a y x plus a x y. So from here, yeah, it's very easy to see that. Uh, so this guy would be zero if and only if this guy is zero. But this is exactly the the definition of the adjoint of A being uh, skew symmetric. So that's the first characterization of Weissmann structure. So the dual of the of the Lie form, the adjoint of the dual has to be skew symmetric with respect with the given permission structure. So then another fact to, to mention here is that, so we always have that J of A, which is another vector in our Lie algebra, has to be orthogonal to the original A. That's because J is skew symmetric, right? So this guy is minus, so it has to be zero. So it means that we have, so originally we have uh, something in the direction of A plus kernel. Now we have some extra element. So we have A, J, A, and something else that's called K, and this is the kernel of the of the leaf form. Again, everything is orthogonal. Okay. With this in mind, so the next property of, of Weissmann Lie algebra is something about the kernel of this uh, leaf form theta. So Weissmann itself, he proved that, he proved that uh, kernel of, of theta, so let me just call H for short, and meet a Sasakian structure. So I don't want to talk too much about this, but just to give you a very, very brief idea. So this is, uh, so you need a, a metric, so an inner product, so everything is, the Lie algebra here. And what is the, the metric here? It's just the restriction of the original inner product that you have. You restrict it to H. Then you need some special vector psi. In this case, in our case, is this guy is JA. So this is called the rib uh, vector in a Sasakian structure. Then you need a tensor with some properties. So this tensor is almost our original J in, in the K part, and then in the re vector is zero. That's how you define this tensor. And you also need some eta one form with some properties again. And in our case, this is just uh, the Lie form composition with J. So, well, of course, plus relations between these uh, objects. That what Sasaki structure is. I don't want to talk too much about this because it's just something we will use to say something else in a minute. But remember that given a Weissmann uh, structure on your Lie algebra, if you take this uh, co-dimension one part, kernel of theta, so this part has a Sasaki structure. And this is this is really important and imply a lot of condition of our Weissmann Lie algebra. 
Okay. So let me tell you some other facts about uh, the algebra with these structures. So again, this LCK, but now uh, we assume a unimodular. So if you assume unimodularity, then JA has to be not only in the kernel of theta, which is already there, but also in the commutator ideal of, of G. So you can really prove this. Uh, it's not hard to do it. And moreover, if uh, G is solvable, so we know that, of course, uh, the ideal is nil, the commutator is nilpotent, right? So in particular, so any adjoint of X is nilpotent for any guy in the commutator. So in particular for our JA, right? So that's the first consequence. So this guy is nilpotent. Keep in mind this. So here is not Weissman, but it's in general. For LCK in the algebra, if you assume your Lie algebra is unimodular, then this JA, the adjoint has to be nilpotent. On the other hand, if you now assume uh, it's Weissman, so it's, uh, it's possible to prove that this guy, the adjoint of JX, A, sorry, is a skew symmetric. So this is a consequence. This is a consequence of the fact that we already have in a Weissman structure this guy, which is a skew symmetric. And using this plus the integrability condition, we can prove that the adjoint of JA is also skew symmetric. Well. Perfect. Now, what's happening? We combine both things, right? So, in a Weissman structure, so we have that the adjoint of JA is nilpotent and skew symmetric. So, what happened? Well, it has to be zero. So, imagine. Is skew symmetric, <clears throat> nilpotent, more or less mean that, <clears throat> sorry, that as a matrices, you can think of it is a strict, up. Um, if it is skew symmetric, you have to copy the other side, so it has to be zero. But this easy consequence implies that, so what is uh, telling this is that JA is in the center of our Lie algebra. So J A is a central element. And this will be really uh, important in what follows. What follow. So in particular, we have uh, the next uh, result. So we more or less describe what's happened with the with the center of a Weissman Lie algebra. So Weissman, then we already see that the this guy is in the center of your Lie algebra. But the important part is that the center has at most dimension two. And not only that, but also the other possibility, the other element in the in the center is just A. So JA is already in the center if you have a Weissman structure. 
and it could be that it's one dimensional or if it is two dimensional, A is the other element in the center. So to prove uh, this, so here we really use that the fact that, uh, so that's a consequence, so consequence of the fact that kernel of theta as a second structure. Yeah, so we have um, at least some information about the, the center of uh, Weissman, the algebra. And what is important uh, at this part is, or maybe what we have so far. So we have, so far we have that our, the algebra G decomposes as A plus something else which contain J A and some guy K. So this was uh, called H and H has a Sasakian structure. Sasakian structure. But with the previous result, we have that J has um, no trivial, actually has one dimensional center. So J A is in the center of this H, and that's all. With this in mind, there is a result we can use. So let me explain. So first note that, know that uh, K, so that third part of, of our G is J invariant. It's J invariant because uh, its complement is just A and JA, which is uh, J invariant. So K is J invariant. And so the Lie bracket of G, the Lie bracket of G uh, decomposes as follows. So we can take uh, X, Y, G. So we already proved that. So let me emphasize that this is the Lie bracket G. So we see that J A has to be in the in the commutator. So it has to be some scalar here. So the scalar is just this uh, the fundamental two form plus something else, which is the K component of the of the Lie bracket. So let me call this X Y. K component of this. So this is a result of um, Andrada, Andrada, Pino, and Bezzoni, So they proved this result. So the Lie bracket of G decomposed in this way. And the important part is that your Lie algebra, so your subspace K with this Lie bracket is actually a Lie algebra. You can take the restriction of the original Hermitian structure. And this, uh, this guy is a killer. This is the result of uh, Andrada Fino Bezzoni. So what this means? So this means that, this means that um, the Lie algebra, the original one, G, well, this is just about the, the Sasakian part. So the Lie algebra we call H, which is the kernel of, of theta, is a central extension, central extension. So because of this, right? So this is a central extension of a Keller Lie algebra. 
central extension of uh, k with the Lie bracket sub k by this cocycle omega restricted to k. And the clear condition means that um, this omega k, which coincide, coincide with the killer form of the Hermitian structure in k given by the restriction of the original one. So too many words to say that in this situation, when you have a Sasakian structure, Sasakian Lie algebra H, um, with the dimension of the center equal to one, which is this case, this Sasakian Lie algebra is always an extension of a central extension of a Keller one. That's the result uh, we have. So if we put everything together now, so remember, we start with Weismann. In the middle, we have Sasakian Lie algebras. And this Sasakian comes from Keller. So everything together says that we have G, which is of the form A plus kernel of the Lie form with the Weismann structure. So inner product and J. Weismann. Then we have Sasakian part here. So the kernel of, of theta, which is J A plus K Sasakian. And we also induce a Keller structure on, on the K part. So K is a Keller Lianja. So with the restriction of, of the Hermitian structure in, in any step, Keller, it's Keller. So it's restriction to K of the original one and also restriction of the common structure. But the, the, the theorem, so of Andrada, Fina, Bettoni, and the previous one also give you the other direction. So you can start with the Keller you can do this central extension and get a Sasakian with y dimension and center. And with the Sasakian with dimension of the center equal to one, then you do an, an extension and you get the Weismann. So that's what we prove. So we prove that uh, this uh, characterization of, so this is with central extension to, to go back, central extension. And then just with semi direct products. So we really have a characterization here of, of Weismann, the algebras, and Keller uh, extension passing through Sasakian structures. So, but let before mention the, the result, let me one say one extra fact. So this is general, but if you assume G is unimodular, so it's implied that K is also unimodular. But K was scalar. And if you combine both, both things, so scalar and unimodular, so this is a result of uh, Hano. That's 57. So he proved that the metric you have in the in your Keller part, so the metric with was the restriction of the original one has to be flat, and that's really important. And in that K we call so K with the with the inner product and the restriction of the complex structure, call this flat the algebra. Just to emphasize, we also have a complex structure involved there. So with this in mind, so we can summarize everything in the next result. 
which is a characterization of Weissman, uh, the algebras unimodular. So we prove this uh, with Adrian Andrada 2017. So there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between um, the algebra, which is unimodular, solvable, and meeting a Weissman structure. And pairs of k, so k um, is a Keller flat, Keller flat, k is, sorry, Keller flat, the algebra, and then we need to do the extension to, central extension to a Sasakian, and then to the Weismann, so it means that we have a derivation, let me call E, so E is a derivation of K. And the extra property we need to have everything work is just this uh, derivation has to commute with the complex structure. So in this case, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between solvable Weismann unimodular the algebras and this Keller flat with a derivation. So what the relation, so the G can be written as, so you start with the Keller Lie algebra, make the central extension by a cocycle with the cocycle, where the cocycle is just the, the fundamental two form, the original fundamental two form on G restricted to K. So you do this central extension and you get the first extension, which is Sasakian, and then using the derivation, you extend this one uh, uh, extra step, and then you have your G. So any Weissman can be constructed using a Keller, flat Lie algebra, and a derivation. So that's a very nice uh, characterization. So we use it uh, this characterization a lot to, to prove properties of Weismann Lie algebras to give families of examples uh, in low dimension. Okay, so that's what uh, more or less what I want to talk about this uh, Weismann Lie algebras. And just to finish in, in uh, two three minutes, let me say something about some open problems um, in this topic. I will mention just two or, or, or three. So the first one, so G unimodular, G unimodular and solvable with the Weissman structure. Sorry, with, yeah, Weissman. Weissman structure. So in one of the previous results, we saw that the dimension of the center of the Lie algebra G, so JA is also is always in the center, so dimension is greater than one, and is at most two, right? And there are examples of both uh, situation, but this is for Weissman structure. So the question is, what happens if uh, the structure is just LCK, non Weissman? What we can say about the dimension of the center? Well, it's a very easy question, and but this is still open. So there are examples. So there are examples. Examples uh, with, with trivial center. But all other example, all examples 
of course, no, non example so far, um, has dimension of the center less or equal than two in general. But yeah, it's, it's not proved that the center, uh, the dimension of the center is bounded uh, above by two. So this is still open in general. And uh, well, uh, the other things is the just uh, what I mentioned about uh, Sawai and and the characterization he, uh, he did for for LCK structure. So he studied LCK structure on the almost nilpotent, but the very particular families of almost nilpotent. So just this one. And he characterized Weissman and LCK there, but again, the question here is what happened for LCK in general? And impotent and not isomorphic to extension of Heisenberg. Again, this is widely open. So the, the only study cases is just this one by Sawai, which is dimension of the commutator equal to one. The rest is, is open. And if you remember uh, in the in the in the second lecture, we also talk about the conjecture of uh, Ugarte. And I will finish with this conjecture. So he studied um, so the conjecture is about two n plus two dimensional uh, nil manifold, nil manifold. With LCK structure, LCK structure not necessary invariant here. The conjecture is in general, and he said that in this situation, so the D group has to be uh, diffeomorphic to just an extension of the Heisen. So it's done for if the complex structure is invariant, it's done. So why did it? And if, if you assume instead of LCK, Weissman is also done by Giovanni Bazzoni. But in general, it's up. So non-invariant LCK, not Weissman is not known. Okay, I think uh, I will stop here. We are two minutes past to the time. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope you can enjoy the, the mini courses. All right, thank you very much. Very nice results and uh, open problems. Okay, any question? Thank you. Any question from the audience?